Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, we may feel that our enemy doesn't deserve our mercy. However, it might help to realize that it is God's mercy that we extend. That is God's mercy that counts. Let us think of those who have wronged us and pray that we can be instruments of God's mercy, even as we seek the Lord's pardon and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you heal us wounds of sin and division that grips our lives. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you redeem us and restore us to holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you show compassion to those who place their trust in you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Samuel. In those days, Saul went down to the desert of Ziph with 3,000 picked men of Israel to search for David in the desert of Ziph. So David and Abishai went among Saul's soldiers by night and found Saul lying asleep within the barricade with his spear thrust into the ground at his head 
and Abner and his men sleeping around him. Abishai whispered to David, God has delivered your enemy into your grasp this day. Let me nail him to the ground with one thrust of the spear. I will not need a second thrust. But David said to Abishai, Do not harm him, for who can lay hands on the Lord's anointed and remain unpunished? So David took the spear and the water jug from their place at Saul's head, and they got away without anyone seeing or knowing or awakening. All remained asleep because the Lord had put them into a deep slumber. Going across to an opposite slope, David stood on a remote hilltop at a great distance from Abner, son of Ner, and the troops. He said, here is the king's spear. Let an attendant come over to get it. The Lord will reward each man for his justice and faithfulness. Today, though the Lord delivered you into my grasp, I would not harm the Lord's anointed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. But the spiritual was not first, rather the natural, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, earthly, the second man from heaven. As was the earthly one, so also are the earthly. And as is the heavenly one, 
so also are the heavenly. Just as we have borne the image of the earthly one, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly one. The word of the Lord. the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, To you who hear, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. <clears throat> do to others as you would have them do to you, for if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good things to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather, love your enemies and do good to them and lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. For he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. <clears throat> Be merciful, just as your father is merciful. Stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and the gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down, and overflowing will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the words of the Gospel. <clears throat> in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Each year when I reflect on my vocation as a priest, I'm always humbled and in awe of what the Lord has called me to do. And although what the priesthood and the church have looked like has changed over the years, how I envision the priesthood and the essence of what it means to be a priest has not changed. I entered the priesthood because I wanted to share with everyone my love and my commitment to God. I wanted to share with others the true joy and peace in coming to accept the gospel and the gift of the sacraments. I want to help people connect with God 
and God with the people. In short, I desire for people to get to heaven. That desire, of course, was nurtured for me in my own family, but it was also nurtured and sustained in me by the education I received in Catholic schools and in the seminary. This would not have been possible if not for the generosity of the people of God, of people like you. Because of the goodness of the people of our diocese, men thinking about the priesthood can receive a solid education and formation. When my family came to the from the Philippines in 1986, my parents could barely afford to provide for us. But through the help of my local parish and the people in that community, my parents were able to send me to Catholic school where my desire to love and serve the Lord grew. I became an altar boy and an active member of my parish. Years later, I entered when I entered the seminary where I studied at St. Charles Borromeo in Philadelphia. I was able to continue to count on the support of my parish and parish organizations like the Knights of Columbus. And, my, and a significant portion of my seminary tuition was, was largely supported by the diocese through the House of Charity. Our parish has been very generous to the House of Charity in the past years, especially last year. And I am grateful that it has remained an important cause for many of our parishioners. Last year, we not only met our goal, but exceeded it. And I'm happy to announce that 10% of what was returned was returned 10% was returned recently to our parish, which amounted to more than $14,000. This will help us fund programs for our youth and young adult ministries. And so, once again, I am appealing to you, as Bishop Sullivan has appealed to you last week in his video to remind you not only of the importance of your continued support for the House of Charity, but also of what it means for the future of our diocese and for the priesthood. I know that these past two years have been very difficult for many, but despite of the challenges, many of us have also been blessed with resources and are therefore in a position to share those blessings with our greater community. The formation and the education of future priests is one of the important areas that the House of Charity supports. But it also supports programs like the Hospital Chaplaincy Program, which is shared as part of our parish responsibility. As one of the priests here in our area, I am on a weekly call at Inspira Hospital in nearby Malacca Hill. On a regular basis, I am often called to administer the last rites and final blessing for those who have died. Just a few months ago, I administered the last rites to a woman dying in a hospital. After I had given her communion and administered the sacrament of anointing, I remember she looked at me and she said to me, next time I see you, it will be in heaven. I remember her words and almost that almost brought me to tears. It touched me very deeply and reminded me how essential the priesthood is for our people and for the world. I leaned closer to her and I said to her, when you get to heaven, please pray for me, for I would like for us to meet there again. I know that there are many today who would question the relevancy of the church and even the priesthood. There are those who would want to paint it as unessential and unimportant. The clergy abuses have disfigured the church as the bride of Christ. Yes, I would be the first to admit that there are many injustices that need to be corrected. But the priesthood, the vision of the priesthood that inspired me to choose this vocation has never changed. Our Lord Jesus established the priesthood so that people might find not only comfort and healing, but peace and salvation. So that people might not just find God, 
but be fed with his body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. More so than ever, whether people realize it or not, people need the church, and the people need Christ. The woman I anointed that other day died with the sure confidence that she will see God. She received our Lord in the Eucharist and was anointed with the holy oils that freed her, freed her soul from anxieties and eternal death. Who among us can give that certainty through our own efforts and without God and His church? Who among us can say to that woman, you don't need the church and you don't need priests. We are blessed here in our parish to be served by three dedicated permanent deacons. Their training were also funded by the House of Charity. In speaking for myself, I know that without our deacons, so much of our ministries in the parish and ministry to the sick would not be possible. They are here and we are able to train men to the permanent diaconate because of the House of Charity. And so we need to continue to support the charitable and spiritual efforts of our parishes and our diocese. These ministries are essential for the sick and dying and for the future of our parishes. Our House of Charity goal this year remains the same as last year. $143,000. If every registered family in our parish participate, we will easily meet our goal within the week. And if you are in a position to make a pledge, I would like to ask you to consider making a total sacrificial gift of at least $500, payable in nine months. That is approximately $55 a month or $1.20 a day which is an equivalent of a 12-ounce cup of coffee from Wawa. It is a sacrifice, but it is not unreasonable. For $1.20 a day, we will be able to continue to do our part in continuing God's work of compassion and mercy in South Jersey. I know that this has been a tough couple of years for many of our families. The inflation and loss of jobs have taken a toll on so many of us. I also know that there are some who are concerned that the money will go to the settlements and lawsuits that has been plaguing the church. Bishop Sullivan has repeatedly stated that these monies are restricted and will not go to any of those fundings. Having been your pastor these past couple of years, I can assure you that these restricted funds of the House of Charity remain protected in accordance with civil and church law. Every single penny given to the House of Charity will be used to fund programs like the hospital chaplaincy and permanent diaconate programs. Every single penny will support struggling parishes and Catholic schools. Every single penny will be used to support our campus ministry programs like we have at the nearby Rowan University. And every single penny is used to support the formation and education of future priests, like it did for me, for Father Joe, and for Monsignor Tracy, so that there will always be priests who will follow after us, so that the Eucharist and the sacraments of the church will always be available to the faithful. When you entered the church today, you were either handed a pledge card or you can find the pledge card right there in the corner of your pew, and I ask you to please take it out now. On the left of the card is a chart detailing the amounts of possible pledges, along with monthly payments and daily sacrifice. On the right side of the card, you will find a section where you can identify your total gift along with putting in your personal information. Some of you have already received the pledge card in the mail and have already made your pledge. If you've made your pledge already, I thank you, and you can simply check the appropriate box in the middle of the card to indicate that you have already done so. I'm going to give everyone a minute to fill out the cards. Even if you have already made your pledge or you are unable to make a pledge today, 
please check the appropriate box that applies to you. You may want to consider making a flat gift if you're not in a position to make a pledge. If you have any prayer intentions, I encourage you to also write them on the card. Here is my pledge card. I have made my own commitment to the House of Charity, and I want to thank Father Joe, Monsignor Tracy, and our deacons for their generosity and commitment as well. I would not ask from you what we ourselves are unwilling to do. I will ask the ushers to collect the cards in about a minute. If you don't have a card, please raise your hand and one of the ushers will bring them to you. And then I will take your cards as a sign of your offering to God and I will place them on the altar so that we can remember you and your intentions at Mass. Remember, what you write on these cards will be placed on the altar today. You can also use your phone and scan the QR code on the card if you prefer to do it online. And to those of you who are watching us from home, you can also go online and go to the website camdendiocese.org backslash HOC. I will now ask Kathy to play music while you fill out the cards. come around with the baskets to collect the cards. After the ushers have collected them, I ask the ushers to give them to me directly so that I might place them on the altar as your prayer intention. I ask you to please only submit your card if you are making a pledge, have made a pledge, or have an intention that you would like for us to pray for at Mass. If you would like to take the cards with you and submit it at another time, you can either mail it back to the parish or you can drop it off at the collection basket at any time that you come for Mass. Every time people ask me how I'm liking it in my parish after being in full-time Catholic education for 10 years, I always say how blessed I am to be here at Mary Mother of Mercy Parish. We have a wonderful, giving, and faithful parish. So many of you have inspired and touched me by your support, your generosity, and love. And please God, please God, you will grant me many more years to serve you as your pastor. I thank you for your time, your support, your goodness, and your generosity. As God has graciously blessed us with the resources and gifts, it is only right and just that we now give back to God some of what he has given to us. May God bless you and protect you.
I now invite you to join me in prayer as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not be, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things remain, for us men and for our salvation. And by the Holy Spirit, this is incarnate, Virgin Mary, and the King Man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate, who suffered, died, and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The Lord is kind and merciful, as we sang in the psalm. And so we ask for that kindness and mercy as we bring to mind our needs and the needs of our brothers and sisters. For the church, <clears throat> that we may be a font of mercy to all people, approaching sinners with love and forgiveness rather than judgment and condemnation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in public office may work for justice for the vulnerable, pursue equity for the disadvantaged, and advance policies that support the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For ambassadors, diplomats, and all who work in foreign service, that they may strive for understanding and patience between world leaders with a goal of peace between enemies. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all the sick and those who bring care to them, we pray to the Lord. For the success of this year's House of Charity Bishops annual appeal, we pray to the Lord. <clears throat> for an end to the COVID pandemic in our country and around the world, for all those dedicated to the sick and suffering, for those who have been affected by the virus, and for all of those who have died, we pray to the Lord. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life in our diocese, especially from our parish family of Mary, Mother of Mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For couples who long for children, for children who long to have a family, for all unborn children, and for all those bearing new life, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. And for all of our intentions, spoken and unspoken, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we lift up our own prayers and petitions and these petitions, let us ask for the intercession of our Blessed Mother for peace in the world, especially in the Ukraine. As together we pray, Hail Mary, full, full of grace, the Lord, the Lord is with thee. Blessed Lord, art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Please be seated. And we generously will give us all sins and death, many and long, down to the
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> Until you come Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Dennis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us offer each other a sign of peace. Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
which is pledged to us by these mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a good evening, everyone, and have a good weekend. As we go forth to share God's many blessings, let us all sing together in the song of Jesus Christ, through our Lord.